brothers and sisters so i'm just here in san damiano i'm uh, just on a bit of a pilgrimage with my parents aunt and uncle and this is the place where francis received his great mission where the lord spoke to him from the cross and said to him francis rebuild my church it's in ruins and francis thought at first it was to rebuild the little church here at san damiano and he began and much later on he would rebuild uh, the Lord, he would realize the Lord was calling him to be an instrument, along with St. Dominic at the time, to rebuild the whole Catholic Church from the corruption, from, from all the, the vice, uh, from, from all the, the frailty and weaknesses of the Church of, of his time, and to recall people back to the, the, the purity and the beauty of the Gospel, the freshness of the Gospel, the, the way the Gospel uh, wasn't being so clearly seen by, by the lay people, by the priests, by the bishops the whole papal court at the time there was a lot of you could say just the poor witness so people didn't feel inspired by the gospel and again in our own day it's a similar moment where maybe we need to pray for a renewal of the whole church not just priests and bishops but the whole church all of us all the baptized so we too are really radically living for god and for prayer and for charity and looking after the poor and looking after each other's needs bearing each other's burdens which is a true symbol of charity living in our hearts Many of you would know the famous, famous um, canticle of the sun, where Francis breaks out in song and prays, you know, calling the sun, uh, is it brother sun and sister moon, and, you know, calling all the creatures. And, and we might think that Francis did this while he was in a great state of life, where he was, he, he, whether, whether he was in, in a strong praise and prayer. But he did this in a part of his life where, he was actually uh, suffering a lot. He was going nearly blind. And he actually was staying here in San Damiano. And it was in San Damiano that he, that he was here. He was going almost blind. He had received the stigmata on top of Mount Laverna. And he was in a room where apparently there were rats and they were jumping on him, keeping him awake at night. He was in a, in a, experiencing the weakness of going nearly blind. He was cold, it was winter, he was suffering a lot, and the Lord spoke to him and said, Francis, rejoice and be serene as if you were already living in my kingdom. And this had a profound impact on Francis. He got up and he said to the brothers, we must praise the Lord. And it's a reminder to us to beg God for the grace, no matter the trials, the tribulations, the sufferings, the exhaustion, no matter what we're going through. We all face these in different ways. We all face the cross. We all face suffering. Ask the Lord to rejoice and give thanks because it's so that our spirit can have the freedom of being in the kingdom, knowing that the Lord is there. But we can ask that grace from God to elevate us out of our stupor, out of our depressions, out of our anxieties. And one of the best ways to do that is to commit an act of the will to praise, just to praise God, whether you feel it or not. It's not about your feelings. It's about, it's about praise. It's about making the decision to praise God. And so as the bell for the Angelus is being rung here, we remember that great moment where Gabriel came to Mary and where Mary gave that great praise when she went to her cousin Elizabeth. So I pray that we will have the gift of praise to ask God to praise God out of our sufferings, out of our trials, that we will praise the Lord and we will find their peace and joy when we learn to praise God, whether we feel it or not. Slowly, eventually, the fruits of the Holy Spirit will be born in our heart when we praise God with gratitude, even for our sufferings, trials. Praise God for just being alive. May the Lord bless you.